Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Tian, my moderator. God bless you. Getting ready to go live. We're looking to have a glorious time today. Decided to keep it simple. I shall wear a crown. Going to keep it simple today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bishop Coleman here. Call somebody and tell them we're getting ready to go forth with our lesson today. Be blessed of the Lord. Give somebody a call and tell them to log in. DKM, Bishop Coleman's page. Shall see his face, oh God, when it's all Praise the Lord, DKM, Bishop Coleman here. The closest I can get to my daughter, Rian, singing that song. How I made it over. You better believe it. I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story. Getting ready to get started. Praise the Lord. Shalom, shalom. Father, as we come before you, we pray that you will look over the people that are logged in today and pray, Father, that you give us a word. Give us a word for today. Encouragement for your people. We thank you, Father, for last night's rest. We thank you for waking us up this morning, clothed in our right mind. We thank you for having the activities of our limbs. We just thank you for the basic necessities that you have given us today. We're praying for those, Father, that have lost loved ones in this dilemma that we're going through. We pray for them that you comfort their heart, Lord, and allow them to have a proper grieving process. Father, we pray that you encourage the pastors, those that are going through that struggling lord we pray for those pastors because they need your help right now father we pray for everyone at dkm that you bless them keep them during this hour of sadness during this hour of tests trials and tribulations father we just thank you we give your name courage we give your name glory 
We give your name honor, Lord. We just honor you and praise you for all that you have done for us and what you have been to us. We just thank you, Father. You have blessed us time and time again, and we will never forget your blessings. We pray, O oh God, that you give us an encouraging word today. Encourage your people because we are in need of encouragement. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We just thank you right now. We magnify your name. We lift your name up. Lord, we thank you because you've been so good to us. We appreciate you, Father. We appreciate you right now. We appreciate your loving kindness and your tender mercies that you have shown toward us. Father, we thank you. We pray that you give us a word today. Give your people a heart to receive and an ear to hear and a will to do. Father, we thank you and give your name glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Yahushua, the world know as Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Greetings, everyone. We thank you for tuning in with us today. I decided to keep it simple because so much is going on, so much is happening. People are, are troubled and people can only stand so much. So I decided to just draw back a little bit <clears throat> from the pressures of what's going on around us and just worship God and just give him praise and just know that we're in his arms. We're under the shadow of his wings. I uh, just start out, just remind us of that so that we won't think that all is lost. Some of us may be going through problems, uh, uh, going through tests that, that we probably don't understand, and, uh, but we just thank God that he's there for us. He's there for us. Somebody ought to give him praise. He's there for us regardless to what you're going through, regardless to what you're dealing with. He is there for us. And we just give him glory for that. We thank him for it. Today, uh, uh, we're just using a basic topic. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And someone would probably say, the Lua, the Elua is my, my uh, shepherd. But we just know him as the Lord today. The Lord is our shepherd. He has blessed us so many times and given us so many blessings. And we're just going to go through this particular passage of Scripture that so many of us know so well. Uh, we were taught this uh, passage of Scripture from a child. They taught us about the Lord. They taught us, uh, according to the Scripture, it says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I remember many times going to church as a child. I remember singing in the choir as, as a child. I remember the Sunday school lessons. Uh, uh, Mother uh, uh, Rogers would teach, Sister Vincent would teach. Uh, Sister Vincent was my primary si uh, 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 school teacher, Sunday school teacher. And um, I learned a lot from her and I, I just honor the Lord for just being able to go to Sunday school. And I remember a lot of the things that we learned, and this is one of the lessons that we learned, was about the Lord being our shepherd. All right, uh, we honor the Lord. We have a few that's logged on, uh, so we're just going to move ahead. Uh, this is a basic lesson today, and uh, we just thank you for joining in with us. All right, we, we're going to move forward. In the book of Psalms, the 23rd Psalms, and I, I like using the uh, King James Version. It starts off by saying that the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. That's, that's personal. You got to have something personal going on with, with the Lord. You can't depend on somebody else. You got to have this thing for yourself. You got to be able to know him for yourself. You got to be able to seek him for yourself. He's got to be your personal shepherd. 
A shepherd is one that, that oversees or protects, makes sure you're being fed, makes sure that you're in a comfortable place, makes sure that everything and all is well. So uh, if you got the Lord as being your shepherd, there could be nothing or no one greater than him that you would trust your soul to. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. And then it, the scripture says, and I shall not want. In other words, I have everything I need. He's my provider. He takes care of my needs. He makes sure that my needs are being met. Now, in this time that we're in, we're going to have to have him to meet our needs. Uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of things that come upon us that we're going to have to be in and up under the umbrella or the arm, the shadow of his wings. So the Lord being our shepherd gives us that security. He gives us that comfort of just knowing that that he's got us. He got us in the, in the shadow of his wings, especially being his children and knowing that we're his children. We're coming in a greater knowledge as we go uh, about who we are and and how the Lord have, have chosen us to, to be a representative for him in the earth. And, and we're, we're getting uh, better and better every day. We're not saying that we got it all together yet. And I'm so glad that he knows that. He knows that, that we still are struggling uh, to, to make this thing right with him and to get it perfect with him. So uh, the Lord is my shepherd. And uh, let's go on to the next scripture. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. Then he says, I shall not want, verse 2, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Let me talk about that for a moment. Have you ever made up your bed? That's an intentional activity that you do. You put forth effort to make up your bed. When he says that the scripture says he maketh me, that doesn't mean that he's forcing you to, but he's making provisions for you. He's making it available for you to be able to lie down in green pastures. He's not putting you in a rough area where rocks and thorns and thistles, we want you to lay down there. But, but he makes it convenient for you to lay down in green pastures. Green pastures is the place where you're going to feed and, and, and have fresh grass, uh, not in a desolate area, but he's going to lead you into green pastures. Uh, that's where the sheep will graze in that uh, green pasture. That's what I love about him. He, he, even during the time that we're in right now, he's putting us in green pastures. He's make, making provision for us. We've been paying attention and doing everything that he told us to do, uh, uh, making preparation to go into this moment then uh, he will make us to lie down. Lying down is a type and figure of relaxation. We shouldn't be too frantic in this situation. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And then after that, it says, he leadeth me beside still waters. He's not leading, leading us into a place where the waters are rushing, where the waters are or causing turmoil. Uh, you know, sometimes when waters get out of hand and when you are, are by those incidents and floods going on and coming in and washing houses, whole houses away, he's not leading you into anything like that, but he's leading us, those of, of us that are in the protective uh, capacity of the Lord. He uh, lead us uh, beside still waters. So if you want a drink, you can go over and take a drink without getting getting drowned. Uh, so, so the Lord is our shepherd, and he's going to make sure that we're lying down in a comfortable place. He's going to lead us beside the still water. Then, this is one of my favorite scriptures that I like to point out. It says that uh, he restoreth my soul. Let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, I don't believe any of us have got it so together 
that we have never had a need to be restored. Every now and then you need the Lord to come in and do a restoration work in your life. Uh, see, I, I'm so glad he left room for improvement. We can get better. We can get to the place where he uh, will restore us in the time of need. When we have a situation going on where we need restoration, he restoring us. This is a good time for some of us to be restored because you know you haven't done everything that you're supposed to do. You know that you, there are some areas in your life that you need to brush up on. So the scriptures say, he restored my soul. That's an inner situation. Sometimes you, you, you go to those green pastures to be stored, lie down to be stored, lay out in, in his face to be restored. And he said, he restored my soul. And then after he restore you, he does not restore you so you can get up and go back to the same place that caused you to have a need to be restored. But uh, when he restore you, you get up and he's going to lead you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, for his name's sake, for, for his uh, uh, reputation's sake. See, he has a, a reputation. His name carries a reputation. Uh, we See, it's been so many times that the world looked over and they saw us at the bottom. They couldn't even believe that we were the Lord's people uh, because we was always at the bottom, always struggling. But it was until we searched and found out that those were the ones that uh, he had chosen that did not adhere to everything that he had uh, told us we must do to remain at, at the top position. See, there was a covenant, and we had to do what was needed to remain at the top. So uh, the scripture said that, uh, he going to lead us in the path of righteousness. When we go into these paths of righteousness, that's going to sustain our position in him. We got off the path. That's what caused us to be down on the bottom. So now uh, as we resume to our uh, designated position in this world and in this life, he's going to start raising us up. And people are going to start noticing uh, I noticed, I seen the president on the news. He had a, a look like a Hebrew Israelite in there praying uh, for him and Vice President Pence. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to give any kind of uh, special accolades, but but I noticed that. He could have called uh, one of those other fellas in, but they know it's something uh, uh, dealing with our people. He know that we carry a certain mantle in the earth. So he called a Baptist preacher in uh, uh, to to speak. Uh, I, I was looking at Bishop Jake, and he had a young man on there that made mention of a Hebrew Israelite that stopped him, and they had a conversation. But he was so happy that he knew the oracles about the Passover. He knew about uh, uh, the, the word of God enough to satisfy the Hebrew Israelite because they are more versed in the scriptures than the tr traditional ordinary pastor and lay member. Uh, and, and all of us are Hebrew Israelites, but many of us don't know it. Many of us have not been trained to study the scriptures and to search the scriptures, but the young man knew. And he was able to give uh, 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 adequate uh, information, and it satisfied the, the Hebrew Israelite person quickly. Uh, I was telling you in, in some of my um, uh, messages prior to this one that uh, uh, the Lord is going to start raising up people all over. You know, we're not the only ones. The few of us that are, are awakened in the Hebrew community, this thing is going to get so bad, he's going to start waking up people all over the world. And that's what the scripture said. Those, uh, the valley of dry bones is going to come together and it's going to cause us to come together as a body, as a strong, mighty army. All right, let's get back to our word. Verse three again says, he restored my soul and he leadeth me in the paths 
not just one path. You just can't get one thing and think you got it all together. For so long, that's what we thought. We thought it was baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, and that was it. No, you got you got paths. You got many paths that you got to take. You got to study this word. You you you, you got to get down into this word, oh, and the New Testament to know uh, uh, what your covenant is, and know what your agreement is, and know what's uh, uh, available to you. All right, it says. Uh, he restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths, multiple, but they all got to be righteous paths. Uh, we, they got to be righteous paths. He's not leading us to to fight and fuss with it, it, all our sisters and brothers or those that don't agree with us. It, it's not for us to fight and fuss with them. You know, um, uh, it, my intentions is to uh, wake up as many of our brothers and sisters as I can, those that are still in the Christian church, some of them got a good heart, some of them are striving, and the Lord's going to wake some of them up. He's going to wake some of them up, but you got some that are so deeply rooted, they don't, they don't want to believe who we are. Well, uh, I'm sorry for those uh, brothers and sisters, but I'm reaching out to as many as I can to try to get them awakened. I got a lesson uh, in in my uh, log, you can go check it out. It talks about uh, a kingdom of priests. You need to know why uh, uh, you are called and why, and what what is the benefit of it. The benefit of it is you're going to re- be able to reign. You're going to be able to sit in the deceit and judge this world. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. We've been talking about it for so long, but in that lesson, you'll be able to find out some information that you've probably been reading over for, for so long. So uh, um, this, this is an important time, all right, that we're living in right now. All right, let's move on a little bit further. He said, he lead me in the paths of righteousness, but it's for his name's sake. It's, it's for his reputation's sake. It's for the reason that, that we don't want to, to have his name uh, be a poor representative of what, who we supposed to be. The Bible said, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. We, we got we to gotta know we got to come out from among the world. We can't mingle with the world. We can't do what the world says. We can't have this uh, a mixed ideology that we can do whatever in the world, but when it comes to, oh, there's something religious now, so I'm separating from them people because they're they not teaching what I believe, but when you're in, in the uh, world, you can do everything that they're doing, but you're going to neglect your people. God going to call that into question, that, that attitude. The, 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 it's going to be called into question. The Lord, he would go into the synagogues where he knew that the people were, were doing what was wrong, but he would go there and he would, he would uh, try to teach and try to help his people because that's where the help is needed. He that is sick is the one that need a physician. He that is whole, if, okay, you think you got it all together, you know, uh, uh, and you push me away, then I'm going to shake the dust off my feet. But as long as you got a hunger, as long as you got a thirst, the Bible says, blessed are ye that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you got a hunger and a thirst, then I'm coming to you to bring you some substance where you can be fed. All right. I didn't know it was so much in the 23rd Psalm, but it is. All right. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths, multiple paths. It's just not one thing you you should be doing, but it's many things you should be doing. You should be praying. You should be fasting. You, you should be studying his word. You should be worshiping. You should be witnessing. You, you should be a, a, a person that can be relied upon. When people have problems, you ought to be able to be one that they can call, one that they can look up to. You, you should be like the little damsel that was down there uh, when Naaman, uh, in Naaman's house. When Naaman was sick and she said, oh, I would to God that, uh, that Naaman knew that there was a prophet in Israel that can uh, heal him of his leprosy. We got to be in a position. We got to have a testimony uh, uh, so that people can know. They ought to be able to say, go over to Bishop Coleman's 
a, a, a page. You, he'll be able to tell you something. You'll be able to find something out. They ought to be over there, be able to go over there and hear a word from the Lord. That's how it should be. We should have something to tell the people that's applicable for this time that we're living in, that, that is relevant for this time that we're living in. And my sisters and brothers, this word that we have is very relevant. All right, let's move on because time is steady moving. All right, we're on verse number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. My friend, that's where we are today. We're walking through the valley of the shadows of death. That's where we are. That's death all around us. Sometimes you get shadows of death when a person is, is sick and you don't know if they're going to recover. That's the shadow of death. And the Bible says, yes, we are going to walk. When you see that word, yay, when you see that word, yay, it says, yay, though I walk through. So we're not going to pitch a tent down there. We're not trying to stay down there with all the dead bodies. It says, yay, though I walk through, we're going to keep it moving. We ain't trying to pitch no tent in sorrow. We're not trying to stay sorrowful. That's why I pulled this message today to remind us that, yes, we, we do have special and divine privileges. That he is doing special things for us during this time. Those of us that are praying, I was up early this morning on my knees praying, praying for all the saints, praying for their serenity of mind, serenity of heart. Because sometimes people lose uh, uh, their composure and lose their desire to stay with God and, and just throw up their hands and go back to everything that they was doing. It's a suicidal spirit that's loose. Because sometimes people can't take too much uh, uh, sorrow and grief and death. They can't handle it. But God, I want him to equip us to be able to handle whatever he allows to come upon us. That's why I'm not afraid to post to you, to show you what's really going on over this world, to show you how bad it is. I'm not afraid to do that because we got to have the mindset to be able to handle these things because that's what's coming on the world. We're only at the beginning of sorrows, the beginning of, of the trouble that's getting ready to take place in this place. All right, we're going to move on a little bit further. Say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. See, that's what's wrong with people sometimes. They, they are too afraid. They're too afraid of what's going to happen. They, 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 they think, oh, Lord, what am I going to do now? But, but we got to learn how to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. We got to learn how to do that. We got to learn how to acknowledge him in all our ways so that we can get some direction in this thing. We need some direction. We need the Lord to direct us so we'll know uh, uh, what way to go and what turn to make, what choices to make so that we can uh, sustain ourselves and our families. Uh, somebody ought to praise him for that. You ought to write uh, type amen in the comment section. All right, let's go back to the word. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadows of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou art with me. We got to know that he's with us. Is he with us? That was one of my prayers that I prayed when I was put in the place of, of becoming a pastor. I said, Lord, I need you to be with me. You know, because I wasn't raring for this position, you know, because I knew it was going to come with a lot of responsibility. You have responsibility of the people, responsibility of the keeping up the house of the Lord. You have responsibility of, of, of watching and being there when, you're, when your people have problems and trouble. It was a, a, a world of responsibility. You got to be there when times of grief come. You got to be there when they have children. 
You got to be there when, when they are going through marital problems. You got to be there. And then on top of all that, you got to be there for your family. Uh, you're not done because you, you know, uh, took care of the things at the house of the Lord, but you got issues you got to deal with in your home too. So uh, we got to know these things. So and say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I'm so glad the Lord is with us. I'm so glad he's with us. Aren't you glad he's with you? Somebody say, type in the comment section, yes, I'm glad. I'm glad. All right. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And then it says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. See, a lot of times when, uh, um, when, when the Lord is leading us every now and then, he need to get that rod out. Get that staff, and you know, sheep is sometimes straying away off to their cell. You know, you got wolves out there. You you got a, a, a lot of animals, hyenas out there. You you got you got predators out there. You you got uh, individuals that that don't want to see you make it out there. That's right. That's right. So you got to be prepared uh, to protect the people of God. And you need that staff to, to, if they get out of line, you tap them and get back in line. You come on with the whole, stay with the pack. That's why we have uh, uh, services. I have, the scriptures say, forsake not the assembling of yourself together. Everybody not even on here right now. Forsake not the assemblings of yourself together for the manner of some is. Some people have gotten to the place, they don't, they don't think they don't need the church anymore. You know, they're talking about uh, they don't need the church. All right. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Sometimes when the Lord uh, uh, chastised us and put us in our right place, and when we think about it, we say, I'm so glad that the Lord uh, uh, took care of me and didn't let me stay in the position that I was in. It brings comfort to you that he thought enough of you to, to uh, get you in line, to get you in the position where you can be back, amen, in the position to continue to receive his blessings. Because when you get all out of line, when you get off base, then the blessings stop flowing. I've seen people that backslide. They do a little bit of okay for a while, but then start spiraling down. If it's not spiraling down in their economics or financial system, uh, their, their inner peace spirals. They, they start trying to seek uh, comfort where the Holy Ghost once was comforting them. Now they're looking for something else to take its place, but nothing can take the place of the Spirit of the Lord. All right, let's move on. He says, uh, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We need comfort. We need the comfort of the Lord right now. Uh, with thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So, so yeah, we got friends that probably need comfort, but we need comfort. We need the Lord to come in and comfort us. Once he comforts you, then you might be able to comfort somebody else. But if but everybody's discouraged, you know, that's a problem. Everybody being discouraged. Somebody needs to be in a position to speak up. Somebody ought to be able to get a prayer through in your house. You can't depend on the pastor all the time to come and pray. You got to pray. This scripture that we've gotten for you today is for everybody need to have the Lord as being their shepherd. The pastor is only the under shepherd. So the Lord is the one that uh, distributes out as we need. All right, let's move on a little bit further. Verse number five. Thou prepare the table uh, before me in the presence of mine enemy. And thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have more than one. Right now, 
you know, I, I, I'm not too fond of the gov government right now. I mean, we pray for them. Yeah, I, I pray for them. The Bible will tell you hey, to, to give prayer and supplication for all men. <clears throat> but I'm not, you know, they've done too many things. They've been caught too many times with their hand in the cookie jar. They've been caught too many times throwing a rock and hiding their hand. They've been caught too many times uh, doing things against uh, God's chosen people. So we got to pray for them that they uh, won't lose their mind totally and just try to make us all out uh, pray. Uh, we, we, we need the help of the Lord. That's why I got the scripture today to remind you that the Lord is our shepherd. So we, we don't have to worry. We, we got to lean and trust on in him. All right. It says, thou prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Sometimes people uh, are telling me, ain't you scared to be talking like that? Well, if you're a preacher, if you're a minister, you need to be talking like that. If, if you say that this ought to be what's coming out of your mouth. You ought to be speaking the word of the Lord or else what, you get out of the way if you're not going to speak the word of the Lord. It's the way people are going through what they're going through, the problem that's in the world, and you can't address it, you don't have a right to even be calling yourself a minister of God if you can't address it. See, this thing is uh, past being on the page. It's past being on the page. What we're going through is jumping off the pages now. What we're going through is, is live and in color. And you think I'm just sit, sit up there like a frog in, in boiling water. You, at first, the water was cool, but it, they easing up the fire little by little. And I noticed something, 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 is, something getting hot, but I'm going to sit there. Then all of a sudden, your eyes bucking out and you ain't got strength enough to jump. No, I'm telling you before it get that, I'm telling you before the water start boiling, you sitting around, some, 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 some burning, you smelling yourself being destroyed. So I'm going to tell you before the trouble come. And that's what's wrong. Sometimes people just sit up, procrastinate. They wait. They don't tell you. You got a lot of pastors, they 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 know they the Lord have already kind of whispered to him and told him, You are all my chosen people. It's time for you to step forward. I know you've been studying in secret, because I gave it to you to study. I gave you those scriptures, but you looked over them because you wanted things to stay the same. But now things are not the same anymore. I gotta do some some moving and some shaking to to get my people together. Are you gonna do it? Sometimes they still won't do it. Well, just go on, stay in that pot. And you're going to be boiling over. You're going to be in there floating all around, you know, the, the, the dead. But but the Lord, he's trying to get our attention. All right, let's move on a little bit further. All right. Y'all prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Then after you stand there, at that, sit at that table, eating, then the Lord, he's going to put some anointing on you. Thou anointed my head with oil. See, that's what a lot of folks missing. <clears throat> a lot of folks ain't got no anointing. Anointing come through pressure. Uh, when you get olives, if you want some oil, you got to get a bunch of them olives and crush them. And you crush them on down and, 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 and then you get the oil that comes through the crushing. Some of us don't want to be crushed, but he's going to crush us anyway because if you want this anointing, you got to go to something. It says that uh, uh, y'all anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. We're running over with the word. We got more word than what folk can handle. I had to tone it down today uh, and just remind you that the Lord got you. If you, if you under his wings, uh, but it's some word that, that's, that, that the Lord is telling us that you can read it. It'll, it'll read like the newspaper what's going on right now. And listen, 
things are not going to get better. They're going to get worse because we're in the end time. You cannot stop what is happening. It, it's, we're in the end time. I'm going to remind some of you that may not uh, uh, take it serious about stocking up on you some more food. You need to go get some more food. Don't be going and buying just all canned goods. Get you some dry foods, stuff like rice, stuff like beans, something that's, that'll last for a while because we got a famine that's on the way. Famine is getting ready to hit. Famine is getting ready to strike. Uh, the, the locals eating up all the crops and folks can't plant. They, the, the farm is having problems. So, so all of these things come to us in advance. And then uh, uh, my wife, she went and bought some seeds. You're going to do some planting. Oh, yes, we're going to have to go back to agriculturalism. We're going to have to learn how to get back in the garden. I, I used to help my mother to uh, work her garden when, when I was a young kid growing up. Go out there and pick all the weeds from around it, the tomato plants and, and different uh, 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 pepper plants and all kind of plants, even planted a, a peach tree in the yard. We ain't no more trees in the yard. Ain't no peach trees, apple trees. Folk got apple trees, all the apples just on the ground rotting in. Because ain't nobody uh, 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 got enough energy or nerve or too lazy to go out there and pick up the apple. Used to make apple preserves out of that stuff, peach preserves. Now all the, the, the fruit trees gone now. Now we ain't got nothing we can go out and eat and offer the land. But we got to get back to those things if we want to uh, live the way that the Lord has prepared for us. We got to be faithful over a few things that he can make us a rule over many. All right, I'll prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And uh, 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 I'll anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. We ought to have something for the world. We ought to have something. We ought to have been through enough to know that it's more to it than just the, the hard tests and trials that we're going through. It's something at the end. So we get, we're on our way to being blessed. We, we're going through this thing. We're going through the valley and shadows of death and praying and trusting that God going to sustain us. Do things that promote health. Don't be out there just doing things that turn your health down. You, smoking cigarettes. Drinking the fifth of whiskey and at a time and all that and all that. Well, let's do things that, that promote health. Get you a good diet. Go get you some real good vitamins. And stop taking them little old uh, uh, little vitamins that ain't nothing but just something they done put together, synthetic vitamins. Get you some vitamins that are whole food vitamins because the food is deplete. You need to get some nourishment in your body to be able to fight these viruses and these diseases in the world. They see they they coming at us all all different kind of ways. Stay away from them places like the McDonald's and all of the White Castles and all that Franken food that folks eating. You try to learn how to start cooking your food at home. All right, let, let me let me move on a little bit further because the Lord is our shepherd. All right, my cup runneth over. Verse six. Surely. Let's just rest on that. Surely, somebody ought to type surely in the comment section. Surely. See, you got to know for a surety that God is going to do this. You got to know for a surety that you got salvation. You got to know for a surety that the Lord is going to protect us and keep us. When you know for a surety, that exercises faith. And that's what God is, is looking for. He's looking for faith. He said, when I come, will I find faith in Israel? When I come back, will I find faith among my people? Surely, when you use that word, surely, that energizes, that's the gas that energizes faith. Faith has to have something that it knows for sure, and you don't even see it. Faith is the substance of things you're hoping for. But surely it's going to come to pass because you got that belief down on the inside. So it says, surely goodness and mercy. See, we need both of them. After we get the goodness, we need some mercy to go with it. You know, somebody, all they want is the goodness. 
Lord, be good to me. Lord, fill up my pockets and my bank account with money. Good, good, good. The Lord is so good. But you're going to need some mercy. People need mercy right now. And in order to receive mercy, you got to give mercy. Some folks don't have any mercy. But the scriptures say, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So if you want mercy, you got to learn how to give some mercy. Somebody ought to type amen in the comment section again. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. How long is going to follow you? All the days. During the dark days, all the days. During the troubled days, all the days. During, during the, the famine days, all the days. During the death days, all the days. Goodness and mercy is with me. Somebody ought to give God some glory up in here. I feel like preaching a little bit. Uh, you know, everybody uh, probably trying to talk about the resurrection you know, um, that's fine because he did rise. He did rise. Uh, but calling it Easter is not Easter. It's the Passover. We need to commemorate the Passover during this time. Yes, uh, you know, those sermons was all right and everything, but, but it's beyond that now. It's beyond uh, sitting up, giving out bags of candy and rabbits, you know, chocolate rabbits. It's beyond that. It's beyond that. I, I, you know, I told in, in some of my lessons, I said that, you know, it's going to get to the place where the law is going to make it where you can't be, you can't even uh, celebrate these pagan holidays. And look at it right now. I bet somebody's still trying to celebrate Easter online. Well, you know, it, it's not even supposed to be called Easter. That's that's the wrong choice of words. But even through that, surely goodness, and mercy. <clears throat> goodness on the left, mercy on the right. Shall follow me. See, we got to know what's behind you. Is, is, the, is the word backing you up? Is the Lord backing you up? Surely goodness and mercy shall. When you see that word shall, that means it's not a maybe. For surety. That means that directly is going to happen. We ain't walking on no eggshells. We ain't walking on no thin ice. We walking by faith. All right, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Oh, that's what I love about the Lord. He, he said all the days of my life. I'm getting older now. I'm glad about it too. You know, thank the Lord for getting older, getting older and you should be getting wiser. You should be learning something. Uh, you, you, you should be ready to teach the truth about this thing and not just sit up and, and just, you know, shout all day and uh, everything on online, trying to hack, trying to get in the tune and everything. No, it's, it's deeper than that now. It's deeper than that now. We people need a word from the Lord now. They need to know what to do. What's what's my next? What's the next thing to do? That's what we need. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Goodness and mercy should be looking for you, so we can keep up with you and follow you. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. You got to have this thing in your life. It's got to be with you. It's got to be in you. Goodness, goodness and mercy, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Somebody ought to give God praise. But you're not done right there. You're not done right there. After goodness and mercy follow you, <clears throat> what you going to do when the Lord bless you? What you going to do when he come through for you? Say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, okay? Since goodness and mercy is following me, what is your, what's your part? So your part should be, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever. You got to have a made up mind. I'm staying with you forever. I'm not just here while the sun is shining. And then when dark days come, you know, uh, you know, uh, sometimes if people, they stay with the Lord long as they, you know, got, got plenty coming in. Soon as rainy days come. And some, sometimes people the other way around. When the sun is shining, they leave the Lord. Rainy days, they try to knock on his door. They bust the door down. Lord, I'm in trouble. But, but we ought to be with him through whatever happened. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All the days of my life. I've been with this since 1975. <clears throat> That's a pretty long time. And I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm happy for uh, being with the Lord this long. Uh, you, how about you? Who's your shepherd? Somebody say, what's in your pocket? What's in your soul? The Lord is my shepherd. All right. Let's get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. You know, we, 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 we got a lot of things we need to pray for. Uh, you know, some of you all that, that, that need to have special requests, make your requests known because uh, we need to start praying. The Bible say, pray ye one for another. I need you all to pray for me. Uh, yeah, pray for me. <clears throat> I've been spending a lot of time with the Lord and preparing lessons and doing more uh, speaking than I was at normal services. Uh, the, you know, the Lord gave us a break. We would travel three hours one way going to our south campus and there and back to our uh, people down there. We pray that some of those have gotten online. I hope uh, the text was, re the reminding text was, went out to them. And we're going to have to take a trip down there to uh, make sure everything is all right with our location down there. So we're praying for all the pastors. Yes, we're praying for all of them. <clears throat> Praying for those, even the Hebrew uh, camps. I'm praying for them too, that the Lord will give them wisdom. I'm praying that the Lord will, will word their mouth so they can clean up the way they address people. Praying for them that the Lord will fill them with the Holy Ghost. Yes, if they don't have it, I'm praying that the Lord will fill them because they'll be a, a force to be reckoned with if they had the attributes and was filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm praying for the, the, the pastors that are in the churches, the Christian churches. Yes, I'm praying for them. I'm not talking about them. I'm not calling them out their name. I'm praying for them because I want the Lord. They, they got a soul too. I'm even praying for the ones that know they ain't doing right. Yes, it's, they still may have a chance, but if they don't get it together, at least I, I know I prayed for them. The Lord, help them because they, they need help. I'm not the one to mete out judgment to anybody. I, I want to see everybody saved. This is a critical moment. If you was down, if you was out, uh, you want folk to come by and stomp on you, kick you around uh, because you are doing something that you think that, that they shouldn't be doing. So they going to, you see people beating up somebody, you going to go in and take a lick, get out your car, pull over, go out and you get, hit them too. Damn, get back in the car and drive off. No, it, where's the mercy? Where's the goodness and mercy? You know, because these people, if they miss this, they if they if, if we miss this, if we miss this, we ain't got a possible chance. So we need we need to be helpers one to another. Let the judgment of God take care of some of this, and we're gonna pray for them. We're gonna extend our hand to whoever we can, even Gentiles. Yes, Gentile folks too. Now, I don't know about Esau. I don't, I don't know what's going to become of him. He's going to fall in the hands of the Lord. And the scripture said it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. So um, I'm not, it's not time for me to judge yet. I don't have my crown and my throne to be sitting down judging yet. I'm striving to be able to, for the apostles to choose me and say, let him sit, give him a seat. 
put him over 10 cities. Yes, that's what I'm striving for. Uh, we ought to be seeking the things that are eternal. Uh, we used to sing them old songs. I got a mind to go through with the Lord. If it costs me my life, I'll give it all to Christ. I got a mind to go through with the Lord. We ought to, you got to have a mind nowadays. All right, so so let us not be so quick to judge and to talk about calling out, calling these folks out of their name and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, you get what you give. What you give out, what you ditch out, that's what you're getting back, especially when you meet it out to the house of Israel because they still are God's people. Uh, that, that's a mistake that we have made. Uh, that, that's something that black folk, are good for we good at crushing each other and talking down each other we good at that rather than being like uh, uh aquila and priscilla uh that that was able to pull apollos over to the side and explain to him the word of god more perfectly all right my time is about up uh, i i have went to close to an hour i guess so we still talking about that the Lord is my shepherd. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you once again for allowing us the opportunity to go into the homes of your people. We thank you, Father, because you have been so good to us. You've helped us time and time again. You've been there for us. Father, you have been so good to us. You have given us what we did not deserve. Father, and we're just going to honor you. We're going to praise you, and we're going to glorify your name. Father, we pray that you will touch the hearts of men and women, that they will have a uh, desire to learn more about your word. We're thanking you. We're praising you, and we're worshiping you. Touch everybody that's logged in on today and give them a subtle mind. Give them peace in their mind and cause them to be able to to witness to somebody, Lord, because we want to be able to wear our crown one day. Now, Father, as we go through these dark days, we pray that you'll be with us, keep us, shield and protect us. Hold your hand of protection over your people. Don't let us experience any hurt, harm, and danger. But let us dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We're going to give you glory, honor, and praise in your high and holy name. In the name of Yahweh Shah and Yahushua, who the world knows as Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, that brings to a close our topic for the day. The Lord is my shepherd. Shalom. shall see his face, oh God, when it's all over.